Hey everybody, Dr. Tammy here. Today I'm talking about one of my very favorite subjects and this is going to be very important for all fertility issues. We're talking about healing the gut and the pregnancy link. Essentials for getting and staying pregnant. Who will benefit from this webinar? Well today I'm going to talk about information on the root of all hormone issues, fertility issues, MTHFR methylation, and tie this in with the digestive tract or gut, I like to call it, for couples who need to know the impact on their fertility and pregnancy, are wishing to begin preconception care, or are currently attempting to or are unable to get pregnant. So who am I? Well, I'm a family physician who has spent almost 15 years helping people feel better, reclaim their lives in a natural, alternative way without medications. And most of what I've done is hormone balancing for women, mostly because I've had every female problem known to a female, including infertility for over 13 years. And I've had issues with my gut most of my life. My stomach has hurt most all my life. And even if your stomach doesn't hurt, you can still have things going on that are impacting your hormones and your fertility. So I'm very excited to share that information with you today. I'm going to talk about something called leaky gut, which is getting a little bit more press, but it's very important that you know this in terms of fertility because basically leaky gut is like having a bucket that's leaking water and it doesn't hold the water for you, but leaky gut is like having your digestive tract that's not holding your nutrients for you. And if you can't get those nutrients, then the body can't work optimally the way it's supposed to. 60 to 80 percent of our immune system is located in our gut and 90 percent of our neurotransmitters things that are like serotonin that help regulate our mood are found in the digestive tract as well so it's very important to heal the gut first and it is the root of all issues that anyone can have including depression or anxiety infertility hormone imbalance issues Problems in our GI tract can cause more than just stomach pain, gas, bloating, or diarrhea. It can be the root cause, like I said, of many chronic health problems. And they've been linked to infertility, hormone imbalance, autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid, things like that, diabetes, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, mood disorders, skin allergies, environmental allergies, aging, and cancer, just to name a few. I want you to start thinking of food in a little bit different terms. And I think we socialize around food all the time. You know, even our first date was like, where are we going to go eat? Our social engagements, like our holidays, are always thinking about food. And I really want you to change your thinking to food should be that which is to sustain life, provide energy, and promote growth and repair of tissues. So every bite of food that I put in my mouth, I ask myself this question, is that going to sustain life, provide me energy, promote growth or repair my tissues? And you know, if you're eating something like Doritos or a Twinkie and a Pepsi and you ask yourself that question, well, of course, the answer is going to be no, that's not going to do all those things. But even when you're eating healthy and you're trying, maybe you're doing a paleo diet, high protein, low carbohydrate, even those healthy foods, your fruits and vegetables, things like that might not be right for your body. And I'm going to share with you why that is. This term leaky gut, I'm going to go through the dynamics with you a little bit of how the body processes food. So normally up here in the mouth we chew our food and then it goes to the stomach and hopefully you have enough stomach acid to digest your food and low stomach acid is a real problem in our society for lots of different reasons. Then um, the food gets churned or or through peristalsis which is a process that it actually mechanically crunches down the food. and helps digest it. That stomach acid breaks it down. And then we have the gallbladder which releases bile which is kind of like soap. Don't know if you've ever tried to wash dishes without dishwashing soap but it's very hard to break down the fatty substances. So the gallbladder stores our bile which is basically the soap that breaks down our, our fatty foods. And then the pancreas not only makes insulin for carbohydrate storage and things like that, but it also makes digestive enzymes. And these enzymes are very important to restore if you have issues with the digestive tract. If you look at the small intestines under a microscope, you would see that this purple line is a protective IgA layer and needs to be intact to keep food particles from getting into the bloodstream. We only want our vitamins and minerals and nutrients to get to the bloodstream. And the cell layer in the small intestines is only one cell layer thick, and that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it repairs very easily. It's a bad thing because it's very easily disrupted. And then this red line 
is the bloodstream. And so really we only want our nutrients to get past these cellular adhesion molecules and then get into the bloodstream. And then the blue and the green dots represent normal yeast and bacteria. We call this the normal gut flora that digests our food and breaks down vitamins so that we can absorb our nutrients into the bloodstream. Well, in leaky gut, oftentimes we have low stomach acids, so the food's not broken down very well, and it can be quite irritating to the small intestine. Things like hormone imbalances, medications, artificial sweeteners are probably one of the worst things that break down this protective barrier. And then food sensitivities, um, environmental toxins, pesticides are huge. I'm not even going to get into all the links from pesticides, but you really have to be aware and educate yourself, empower yourself about um, the uh, glyphosates and things like Roundup that are um, rampant in our food supply and all the stuff with GMO, um, basically genetically modified foods were created so that they could withstand the pesticides. And so we're getting a huge amount of pesticides in our um, food supply. So just being aware of that is very important. So all that disrupts the protective layer. And then the next thing you know, you start to lose the adhesion molecules. Maybe you've taken antibiotics and you've wiped out your gut flora, or maybe you eat too much sugar and the yeast have overgrown, and so you have an imbalance in your gut flora. Maybe you've had your gallbladder removed and you can't make the soap that breaks down fatty substances. Or maybe you have insulin resistance, your pancreas isn't working well, and your digestive enzymes aren't present in enough amounts to break your food down. Well, now food literally can fall through these cellular layers and hit the bloodstream. When food hits the bloodstream, it can then trigger immune response. And remember I said 80% of your immune system is located in your gut. So this is a simple blood test that you can have done, and this was a game changer for me. When I first learned about this, I learned it from a chiropractor who was using it for chronic pain, because chiropractors can't write prescriptions for pain medications or pharmaceuticals, so they have to learn these alternative things, and a lot of what I've learned about natural alternative medicine has come from chiropractors who do functional medicine. This is a simple blood test from the company called Altes, and there are 96 foods on this. There are larger panels and other panels that you can do as well, but this is just a basic test. And what this is, is a blood test for IgG, an immune system response to foods when they go through, fall through the leaky gut basically and hit the bloodstream, triggers an IgG or an inflammatory response. And part of what happens in that inflammatory response is cortisol is secreted in response to that, and cortisol is a hormone that's responsible for redistributing belly fat. Belly fat is actually quite protective because belly fat pulls toxins away from the internal organs. So that whole process of cortisol and belly fat can be protective, but over time it decompensates and it's not protective. So these are literally the foods that can make you fat or the foods that cause inflammation in your body. How you read this is the foods in red on this list are the ones that this person is sensitive to. And they rate it one through three, and then they also give it um, a number rating and then a star rating. So for this person, asparagus is a grade one or class one reaction. And you would think asparagus is healthy, right? But in this person, it causes an inflammatory reaction because they have leaky gut and it's, it's hit the, the gut and caused an immune reaction. So literally foods like lettuce or cow's milk, gluten is on here too. And so um, it's very important to identify these food sensitivities. A lot of times people say, well, I tried a gluten-free diet and that didn't help. Well, sometimes when they try to avoid gluten, they eat other things like corn. And if corn is a sensitivity for you, which this person it is, they're not going to feel any better and it's not going to help repair their gut. And they're probably not taking the right supplements to heal the leaky gut, which is very important as well. So this can be very telling and very important towards total health and decreasing the immune system response and healing the leaky gut. I use this almost exclusively with my uh, weight loss patients now because calorie counting, eating less, starvation mode, all of that really doesn't help people who have hormone imbalances and issues with their immune system. So this is a wonderful test and I use it quite extens extensively in my practice. The next thing I want to talk about is SIBO, and this is also getting more press, small intestinal bowel overgrowth. And basically, the 
bacteria that's normally supposed to be in your large intestine for whatever reason has migrated up into your small intestine. And normally, if they're in your large intestine, they don't cause problems. But when they're in your small intestine, they do start to cause problems. And they compete with the healthy bacteria in your gut. So it's kind of like they're up there partying where they're not supposed to be. I think of these bacteria as kind of like weeds in your garden. Weeds are just flowers that are out of place. So they're really not all bad or potentially pathogenic or harmful, but they're just out of place. And they compete for your nutrients in your small intestine. So you can literally be malnourished from these small intestinal bowel overgrowth. This is a little picture that I created to kind of show you that these bacteria, when they're present in the large intestine, are not a problem. But when they migrate up into the small intestine, they become a problem. And they do compete for your nutrients and all the things that your bacteria are normally supposed to do up here. They don't really engage in those things, and they just compete for your nutrients. Also, these small intestinal bowel um, bacteria poop out something called folic acid, which I talked about in some of my um, prior webinars. Folic acid, if you have the genetic MTHFR, you cannot process folic acid well. Folic acid competes for your folate, which is absolutely essential for fertility and for preventing miscarriages and things like that and your hormone health. So we have excess amounts of folic acid. I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can know if this is a problem for you. So all of these things, leaky gut, small intestinal bowel overgrowth, are not just um, voodoo medicine and things that chiropractors talk about or natural medicine people talk about and really don't have an impact on your health. They are in evidence peer-reviewed journals like JAMA, um, Gastroenterology, and there are thousands and thousands of articles. And in fact, just recently, um, my stepdaughter's mother, she, uh, my stepdaughter's 19, her mother was only in her 40s, died from small intestinal bowel overgrowth. So this is very dangerous, and I think the whole population needs to understand this because it can be quite detrimental. Um, but mostly, you know, if you're dealing with fertility issues, this is probably something that you need to consider. The healthy bacteria that basically are supposed to be there, your normal flora, are essential, and they help make vitamins. They help make short-chain fatty acids, which are essential for all sorts of different processes in the body. They help clear xenobiotics or toxins from the body, pesticides, and they prevent colonization of abnormal or dangerous bacteria or SIBO, and they stimulate a normal immune system maturation. I like this little picture because the good bacteria are in there cleaning up and doing all the things they're supposed to do. They're processing food and pooping out hopefully good um, nutrients so that those nutrients are absorbed, not um, folic acid, but good nutrients that your body needs. Your folates and your B vitamins are all dependent on these bacteria working properly. So what are some causes of this SIBO or bacterial overgrowth? Well, low stomach acid is a, is a real problem, and this can come from stress. You know, the purple pill has gotten such um, big press, and people think that if they have reflux, they need more stomach, they need less stomach acid instead of more, but actually they need more. You need more stomach acid to close the sphincter so that the acid doesn't go in your esophagus and cause pain. So we have a lot of misinformation out there. People have had surgical resection, gastric bypass, or maybe you just have motility issues. You know, the whole digestive tract talks to the other parts of the digestive tract. So if you're not digesting well, not enough stomach acid, pancreatic enzymes, bile acids, then you're going to have slow motility, constipation, everything's going to slow down and things are going to be messed up. And when that happens, if you have slow motility, that's just an invitation for those SIBO or bacteria to migrate up into your small intestine and just have a party up there. Stress, antibiotics can wipe out your good flora. High sugar diet feeds the yeast different medications, having different conditions from the digestive tract, parasites, and just not eating healthy can cause these problems as well. The effects of upper GI bacterial overgrowth can be because the main goal of your good bacteria is to process vitamins, B12 deficiency. B12 deficiency is very detrimental because 
for weight loss. Every process in your body is dependent on B12 energy levels and having the nerves process right and having a healthy baby is very important too. You want adequate vitamin levels for your healthy baby. The bile salts from the gallbladder that help break things down um, can be impaired as well. You can't make your fatty acids and this is important for what we call myelination in the nerves in the brain and neurochemical processes for you to be able to think clearly. Um, a lot of people will have what they call brain fog and you want this working properly. And then all sorts of um, water secretion transports and things that you need for healthy digestion. Stress causes an increase in cortisol response and you know, that's something I'm going to be talking in um, upcoming educational webinars. And stress reduction is very important. I'm almost 50 years old, and I'm just now learning good techniques, some um, things that you can undo, some old programming. We walk around a lot of times like we're being chased by a bear all day long, and the chemical processes in our body, because we just don't know how to de-stress. Think about this in terms of, are your issues a five-minute problem, a five-hour problem, a five-day problem? And it's really important to put things in perspective. But the significance of this is that cortisol or adrenaline feeds the small intestinal bowel overgrowth. And this is a picture of a Petri dish. And they've actually done studies showing that when you put these bacteria in a Petri dish and you feed them cortisol or adrenaline, they multiply at exponential rates. So we really have to work a lot on stress reduction. Taking vitamins can be like feeding the bears. And what I mean by that is even if you're taking good medical grade supplements or vitamins or nutraceuticals, if you have small intestinal bowel overgrowth and leaky gut, basically these bacteria are eating your nutrients. They're very greedy, they very competitive, and they'll eat your nutrients. And so you're basically feeding the bears. And I've had patients say, you know, I took those good vitamins that you recommended and I actually got sicker. And that's one thing that I consider when working with patients, taking good supplements like Folate and B12s, even if it's the good right stuff that they need, if they're getting sicker, we really have to look at potentially the small bacteria overgrowth. So what are the signs that you have this? Well, you can have gas, bloating, diarrhea, abdominal pain or cramping, constipation, um, diagnosis of irritable bowel, all those things, food intolerances such as gluten, lactose, um, sugar intolerances, chronic illnesses like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue. If you have diabetes or neuromuscular disorders or autoimmune disease, all of these can be signs as well. B12 and other vitamin and mineral deficiencies and fat malabsorption. As far as fat malabsorption goes, I like to point out this little Bristol stool chart. And you should be looking at your stools. This is kind of gross, but um, your stools should be um, just normal. They should be um, more like kind of like a type 3 here, well-formed. And if you have greasy, floating, gray stools, that means you have fat malabsorption. If you have small constipation, that means that you have motility issues if you have these kind of little rabbit pellet type things. So you want good, normal, healthy bowel movements. Some things that you can do at home to see if you have some gastrointestinal issues. I like the spit test. You basically take a glass of water first thing in the morning before you eat or drink anything, and you spit into a glass of water. It should just kind of stay all connected and, and kind of in a little globule. And if it starts growing tentacles and starts kind of reaching down to the bottom of the glass, you know that you can have some candida or yeast overgrowth, which can be a problem. You can also buy these little pH test kits from the health food store, and you can test your urine or your stool. If it's acidic, that means that these SIBO or small bowel um, bacteria are probably pooping out things like methane gas and ammonia or toxins, which can be very problematic, too much folic acid. So an acidic stool or urine can be a problem as well. I also like to have people do the beet stool transition time. So basically what you do is eat red beets. You've probably eaten them before and um, pooped red and thought, oh my gosh, I'm bleeding or something. But this is a great test because it tells us our transition time. Most people should have at least one bowel movement, maybe two bowel movements a day. And when you um, eat the beets, basically within about 12 hours, you should have red stools. 
some a lab test that you may have had done that your traditional doctor may have done would be looking at um, basically what's com called a complete metabolic profile and a lot of doctors unless you're in the ICU and really sick don't look at the CO2 or the acidity in the blood and that's a simple test that you can do and get that and look at that also if you have increased white blood cells and within normal range um, with functional medicine we look at what's called the normal ranges and if your white blood cells are at the top of the normal range that could be a problem even if it's not out of range elevated Inflammation markers like sed rates and CRPs can be very helpful as well. Getting food sensitivities done if you have a lot of food sensitivity issues that indicates leaky gut and potentially small bowel overgrowth. Uh, again, I mentioned increased CO2 in the blood, which would be done from a CMP or a complete metabolic panel. There are some breath tests that you can order online and breath tests you can do in your doctor's office if they're familiar with this. Um, also looking at your kidney function tests if even within normal range you have an elevated or upwards towards the normal range kidney creatinine that can be a problem and you can also have blood tests ordered for candida for yeast overgrowth as well so what to do well the first thing is you want to repair leaky gut and don't feed the feed the bears and we have a very specific protocol we use with hydrochloric acid pancreatic enzymes probiotics to restore the bacteria things like that, amino acids and anti-inflammatories that heal the leaky gut. And be aware that taking vitamins can make you worse if you don't heal the gut first. Get the right form of methylfolate because the folic acid um, will compete for your folate and folate is absolutely essential for fertility and for maintaining pregnancy. And you've got to get good methylated B12 as well and avoid toxins. Also, sleep is very important for stress reduction, and sleep is important for your metabolism to work properly. Most adults need 8 to 10 hours a night. If your hormones are unbalanced, it's really hard to get good quality sleep. So we really want to focus on all aspects of restoring your health. Stress reduction, um, and there's lots of ways to do this, self-hypnotism, meditation, yoga is wonderful, and then some stress reduction techniques that I'll share with you in the future. Cut sugar. Carbohydrates are um, so rampant in everything that we eat. Sugars are hidden in everything. We had the low-fat guidelines that were published about 40 years ago. And now that they've reduced fat and everything, they put sugar in everything. So you really have to le read labels. And sugar can be hidden um, with all sorts of chemical names. So it really is worth your time to do some web searches and um, research all the different names for different sugar content. When I think about um, carbohydrate content, this is kind of a rule of thumb I use with my patients. One slice of bread is about 15 grams of carbs, and I ask people to limit their carbs to 30 grams a meal. And a bagel will increase your glycemic index or blood sugar faster than a Snickers bar, so you really have to watch your breads and pastas for reasons even other than gluten and um, food sensitivities, but just from the carbohydrate content and eating refined sugars. Part of the problem is if you crave sugar all the time, you could have yeast overgrowth, so we really want to address the yeast. But I ask people to limit their carbohydrates to about 30 grams of carbs per meal. Sodas or um, you know soft drinks have a huge carbohydrate content. Um, an 8-ounce can is about 40 grams of carbs, so that's over each meal total maximum content that you want to get so I really recommend that you cut out sodas and diet sodas are not an option either because the artificial sweeteners actually cause leaky gut so drink water you know you can even sweeten your water with some berries or something like that but um, or lemon or lime if they're not on your food sensitivities but cutting out um, sodas and sugary drinks are very important Exercise, but not too much. I love yoga because it's just the right amount of stress reduction and exercise. I'll talk in the future about different forms of exercise like Tabata, which is interval strength training. But if you're wearing yourself out in the gym for two hours a day, that's very stressful for the body, and it's really not helping anything. So sugar overgrowth or yeast overgrowth, these are some signs that you might have a problem with that. You might be feeling tired or worn down, frequent sinus infections. Maybe you've had history of antibiotic use. You've got digestive signs, moodiness, lack of focus, or brain fog. And a lot of that can come from the insulin surges from eating too much sugar as well. You eat the sugar, the insulin chases that, then you have low blood sugar, and then you're chasing sugar again or you get very tired. Strong sugar, carb cravings, and rashes or yeast infections or vaginal yeast infections, thrush in the mouth, things like that can be signs as well. 
treatment for yeast, um, there are some natural substances like caprylic acid that you can get. Sometimes I'll use prescription yeast medicines in my patients if they have high candida counts, um, but this can be a real issue, especially if you're diabetic. Reduce the refined sugar in your diet and the carbohydrates, and restore the healthy flora with probiotics. A lot of people think that yogurt is okay um, to restore healthy flora. Yogurt in the U.S. is absolutely terrible. It has a huge carbohydrate content, a lot of sugar, and it's not the right flora. It's not the right bacterial ratio to really help people. So um, I do not recommend yogurt for uh, restoring balance. Treatment for small intestinal bowel overgrowth would be avoid your food sensitivities, heal the gut, restore your healthy bacteria, reduce stress because adrenaline feeds the bears and cortisol does too, balance your blood sugar, insulin and cortisol are intricately related, take hydrochloric acid or betaine hydrochloride, gallbladder support, and there's all sorts of different ways that you can get this, and pancreatic enzymes. So our goals are to restore the gut health, restore our immune function, reduce toxins, regulate our um, hormones and override genetic issues like MTHFR that may be keeping you from getting pregnant, and heal the gut because that is the ultimate pregnancy link. Love to help share more information in the future with you. We have all sorts of protocols, supplements. I've done years and years of research on this. It is vital information and so important for getting and staying pregnant. Understanding these um, principles has changed my life. Um, help me get pregnant, help me maintain a pregnancy, and my stomach doesn't hurt anymore, which is absolutely wonderful. In fact, my husband said to me a couple years ago, we were at the airport, um, this is the first time your stomach hasn't hurt. And you know, when you're in the airport, you eat terrible, terrible foods, and um, my stomach has been pain-free, which is wonderful. When your stomach hurts and you're bloated all the time, irritable bowel symptoms, it really can affect your life. So I'm so excited to share this information with everyone I can. So please forward this information on to friends you know, even if they're not dealing with fertility issues. All of this is essential to good health, healthy life, and reclaiming your life, anti-aging, and just feeling good. So wonderful information. Thank you for being here with me today and look forward to um, sharing more information and further webinars. Take care.